Do you think Gotham's villains paint a negative picture of those suffering from mental illness? Careful, Crane. It's questions like that that'll get you locked in an asylum. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Batman the Animated Recap. Last time we covered Be a Clown, featuring Mayor Hill's son having a day at Amusement Mile with the Joker. This time we're recapping our first two-part episode where we see the struggles of Harvey Dent as he slowly becomes the thing he hates. Season 1, Episode 10 of Batman the Animated Series, Two-Face, Part 1. We open on Harvey Dent having a nightmare where he's being taunted by a menacing figure who claims that Harvey can't get away from them. They start flipping a coin, which really starts to unnerve Dent, until this happens. What kind of sweating is that? I don't even sweat like that after a good workout on the Venom! Hey, don't pick on Niagara Falls like that! It's probably glandular! Harvey wakes up to his assistant, Carlos, telling him that Commissioner Gordon has started the raid. Dent steals his resolve, grabs his jacket, and heads for the door. We cut to the GCPD outside a building in a standoff with the people inside. Gordon announces via megaphone for the criminals to come out with their hands up and no one will get hurt. That's not how raids work. Typically raids are done in secret to catch the suspected criminals in the illicit act. Well, maybe the raid went wrong. Huh, very wrong. They're not even in the building yet. The GCPD is terrible at policing. And we love them for it. Gordon exchanges heated words with one of the criminals located up in one of the high windows, and then this happens. Hey, Jim, how's it going? <laughs> oh, 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 that might just be the funniest moment in the episode. <laughs> Why would the district attorney be allowed at the raid? I mean, I get that Harvey is passionate about the case that he's building against Rupert Thorne, but you still wouldn't have him so close to an armed standoff. If your DA catches a stray bullet, that's just bad for business. Not to mention, he just strolls up like he just came from getting a cup of coffee. No protection, no escort, no announcement. What is that about? Maybe everyone just assumes that Batman will show up and take down the thugs for them so they all get to be on easy jobs. Funny you should say that. Inside the building, the criminals are getting ready to blast the cops with military rocket launchers when Batman gets the drop on them, throwing one of them out a window. <laughs> Lucky that awning was there, Batman would have just murdered a dude. Or at the very least severely crippled him. Oh, how I would have loved to have seen that. A short time later, the criminals come running out of the building to surrender to the police. Let us out! Oh... It's so hard to find good help sometimes. While Dent is addressing the media about his plans to dethorn the city, one of the thugs kicks mud on him and says, You talk big, pretty boy, but you ain't gonna be when Mr. Thorn gets through with you. If I were Thorn, I'd have whichever cop is on the payroll kill that man. The reason Thorn is supposed to be so hard to take down is finding proof of his crimes. But that's a little hard to buy when your goons are using your name to make threats against public figures. Harvey becomes incensed and attacks the thug on camera until Gordon manages to snap him out of it. Later on, we see Rupert Thorne watching the events on the nightly news. He wants his... secretary? Question mark? Candace to keep on Dent's trail to dig up some dirt on him so that Thorne can control the district attorney. Candace thinks that'll be impossible because, well, as she puts it... Dent's so clean, he squeaks. We transition to a fundraiser for Dent's re-election where we see an ice sculpture that appears to be melting. But somehow it's displaying less water on its face surface than Harvey does when he's sweating. It's here that we meet Grace, Harvey's fiance. Fiance? Pretty Poison was just five episodes ago and Ivy nearly killed him. Seems irresponsible to be in a serious relationship so soon. Is he crazy? Yes! That's the whole point of the episode! Bruce is concerned about Harvey's intensity lately and asks Grace if everything is okay. She thinks it's just the election causing Harvey some stress. At the fundraiser, Dent gets news from Carlos that the judge threw the case out against Thorne's men, citing that the warrant wasn't complete, which seems unlikely and easy to disprove. I mean, there's no way Harvey would have overlooked something like that, and I'm certain that copies of documents like that are made to help ensure the judges can't just be bought and throw cases out that easily. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, oh, you've been watching the same show as us? 
Where is this confidence in the Gotham legal system coming from? Seriously, your naivety is delightful. Don't ever change. <laughs> Dentist snaps at the news, revealing his ugly side once again, this time almost taking a swing at Bruce before Grace brings him back to normal. Bruce is concerned for his friend and suggests that Harvey get some help, to which Grace reveals that he already is. Dent wants to keep it a secret, though, as he believes if anyone finds out he's seeing a psychiatrist, it will ruin his chances for re-election. I smell an easily exploited plot point coming up, and it smells like fear. <laughs> which smells like citrus. Is one of the patients eating a grapefruit nearby? Harvey tells Bruce to keep what he knows under his hat, and Bruce says, Don't worry. If there's anything I know, it's how to keep a secret. <laughs> Do y'all get it? It's because he's Batman. Everyone on the same page now? Good. We cut to a night shot where Harvey is meeting with his psychiatrist. She uses hypnotherapy to bring out Dent's other personality, Big Bad Harv. What's with all of Dent's nicknames this episode? Handsome Harvey, Hothead Harvey, Big Bad Harv. That last one breaks the alliteration. What were they thinking? We learn that Big Bad Harv is the result of some childhood guilt that Harvey suffered, causing him to repress his anger. And I have to say, aside from, you know, making it seem like alternate personalities are just inherently evil, they do get a lot of this right. I have a friend that suffers from it, and for similar reasons to Harvey's, my friend's alternate, you know, they did look down on my friend, but they saw themselves as a protector, willing to do things that my friend could not or would not do, and, you know, not, not always good things. Um, and it's downright disturbing to see the face of someone you know, only to discover someone else is behind the wheel. I... I can't even begin to imagine what it must be like to be the person being pushed aside by your own mind. Um, where's the punchline here? There isn't one. This, this story just hit close to home, that's all. Well, way to bring the mood down, Mr. Buzzkill. I've got just the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how is fear gas going to help? Oh, that's not fear gas. It's a mood improving mist. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'll say it is. <laughs> oh, okay, no, I'm good. I'm good. What were we talking about? What were we talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. No, I got it. I got it. Big Bad Harp. <laughs> big, big, big Bad Harp. <laughs> what a stupid name. Okay. Oh, anyway, Big Bad Harv becomes violent, threatening the doctor, forcing her to, to snap Harvey out of hypnosis, right? She thinks Harvey should check himself into a facility, but Harvey offers to put in extra work, you know, just putting in the work, getting the gains instead. She agrees, and then we see, shh, 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 shh. we see that Candace was outside the office listening to the whole exchange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's classic Candace. Am I right? Just just spying on people. <laughs> I, I like to call her Candid Candace. <laughs> I was wondering what would break first. Oh, God, uh, well, not really, but clearly you've broken all of him. Eh, I like him better like this. This guy knows how to party. <laughs> <laughs> we cut to election night, and it looks like Harvey is going to win in a landslide. Whoop, whoop. That's right. Get it, Harv. Oops. Nope. Harv's not here. Okay, no problem. Harvey is in a great mood and tells Grace that he is going to announce their wedding date in his acceptance speech, which seems tacky, right? That's not just me, right? That's that's tacky, is it? Whatever. Grace is into it, but before they can kiss, Cockblock and Carlos cuts in to tell Dent that he has a phone call. And the alliteration is back. Is it getting hot in here to anyone else? Oh, anyway. Rupert Thorne, a.k.a. the crime boss with loads of money, a.k.a. a clear stand-in for Rupert Murdoch of Fox, and if you don't believe me on that point, I'll show you my conspiracy board. Later. Later. Anyway. Rupert is on the phone and tells Dent to come meet him or else he'll share Dent's secret with the press. As Harvey leaves the party, he runs into Bruce, who's suspicious of Dent's early exit. So, Bruce watches Harvey get into a car with Thorne's goons, then changes into his bat costume, gets to a rooftop, and manages to keep pace on foot with a car that left almost immediately after Dent got into it. And how? Prepare to be mind-freaked, because it was... Magic. Batman. 
magic. I may have given him too strong a dose. Oh. Oh, why does my head hurt so much? Oh no, he's coming down! Ugh, here comes the boring guy again. You, uh, uh hit your head! Yes, that's it. Oh. Well, then I should be more careful. Ugh. I'm okay, I'm okay. Uh, where was I? Um, Batman plants a tracker on Thorne's car and follows it to a warehouse. There, Thorne outlines what'll happen to Dent if he doesn't play ball, which... Leads to one of my favorite scenes from the episode. There's just one problem. What's that? You're talking to the wrong Harvey. <laughs> Big Bad Harv and Batsy slug it out with Thorne's men, which Candace watches with disturbing delight. In the fray, Thorne makes a run for it, and when Harv follows, this happens. <laughs> At the hospital, the doctor says that a good plastic surgeon should be able to fix the scars, but, like, he clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, the whole reason Clayface comes to be in this universe is because the actor, Matt Hagen, was disfigured in a car accident. If plastic surgery were that good, he never would have had to come to rely on Daggett's Renew You compound. Yeah, and since when do chemical explosions just turn half your hair white instead of burning it off? Weren't you dropped in a vat of chemicals that did comic book type things instead of killing you? <laughs> Depends on which backstory you believe, but your point is well received. Let's move on. When Dent sees what happened to his face, he runs out of the hospital room directly into Grace, who passes out at seeing him. Interestingly enough, in this episode, it's only Dent's face that's disfigured, but in future episodes, we see that his left hand is also affected, so... I guess the burn... spread? Anyway, the episode ends on a pretty sad note. Goodbye, Grace. This episode is a prime example of the care the creators of the show took with the source material. We got a few episodes early in the season of Harvey just being Harvey, and then we get to see him become the villain we all know. If I had one criticism of the episode, it's that it kind of makes Batman look like a terrible detective again. I feel like Bruce would have used his supercomputer, oddly voiced by the same actor who portrays Harvey, Richard Mull, to find out what was going on with his friend the moment he suspected something, instead of finding out by Thorne making threats. I don't know, it's a small thing. What's your take on this, Dr. Crane? A great episode that really delves into what makes Dan tick, setting up Two-Face, and at the same time establishing another mainstay Gotham villain in Rupert Thorne. The episode is light on action, but the narrative is compelling enough that you don't even miss it. 4.5 out of 5 intense coin-flipping sound effects. No! Join us next time when we'll be covering Two-Face Part 2. Shouldn't we just call him Four-Face? <laughs> four, four face oh, oh I'm hysterical <laughs> Till next time kiddies So the vat of chemicals made your skin white and your hair green? No, it just affected the skin. I spray the green in. White and brown is a terrible combination. The venom actually does make my hair green, which is why I shave it off. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when more Batman the Animated Recap episodes go up. And we've got some other cool shows on the channel, so stick around. You might find something else that you like.